All right, so let's get started. Um, so you want to have your uh, default cube right here. Um, you, we're, you don't want to delete it yet because we're actually going to use it. Uh, all right, we're going to make this one of the supports for the building. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to scale along the y-axis, so S, Y. Uh, let's make it 0 0.2 of what it was. And now we're going to do the same with the x-axis, x axis, uh, s, x, 0 0.2. Okay, now we have this support. Let's um, get it right at the right at the grid, the bottom right aligned with the grid by pressing control and dragging the z-axis up. All right, so now we have that there. We want to press shift C to move this cursor, the cursor right here to the origin of uh, the X, Y, and Z axes. All right, now we're going to press Shift A to add a plane. Oops, Shift A, add a plane. Let's scale it up 10,000. Um, just make it look like there's a continuous floor. Um, next, you're going, so we have this. Uh, now you want to switch to Blender Game. We're going to make this a, um, we're going to make this a rigid body. So go over this physics tab over there and make sure you're in Blender game. Physics tab, static, rigid body. So you want to change that static to a rigid body. Um, next, you want to hit go down here to where it says collision bounds and uh, check that on. That'll just make the the way it acts and the it's I guess you could call it a, a space bubble. Its space bubble will be shaped like a box and it won't be a bubble, it'll be a box. Um, so you have that. Uh, next, you want to go over here, add a modifier. Now we're going to make this an array. So you're going to go over here, add the array modifier. And since this is going to be a whole building, we want a grid of these supports. So let's make this grid, say, 10 long. You'll notice that they're all lined up like this. Uh, they're all lined up right next to each other. That's because the relative offset is 1. Since these are 0 0.2, actually, uh, since these are 0 0.2 wide, we, uh, we're going to use that length to determine how big this number should be. We want each one of these boxes to let's press Z. Each one of these boxes to line up with uh, go one, two, and then there's one of the supports on every other um, grid mark right here. So since they're 0 0.2 we're gonna we're gonna make this offset five. You'll notice that they're all at the grid right there, so they're all lined up. Now we want to make uh, we want to give it depth, so we're going to add another modifier. Now you you notice that it just adds another modifier right onto the x-axis. That's because we have this set the x-axis relative offset set to one. We're gonna set that to zero. Oops, that to zero. Um, so it go, the way this is aligned is X, Y, and Z. So we want to set the Y axis uh, relative offset to 5. Now they're all lined up. And let's make this count 10 also. Oops. Yeah. 10 also. So now there's 100 of these. And you have your uh, floor. So we're going to make the tiles that will cover these, cover each floor. So let's go into, let's deselect everything. So press A, uh, add another cube. We What we're going to do with this cube is we're going to uh, make it more flat. So press S, Z, let's make it 0 0.1. Uh, yep, that looks good. So now it's uh, Two tenths of a unit uh, tall. So we're gonna move this up here, and so that's good. It's good it, now. If it doesn't snap, like if it doesn't, uh, you can hold down uh, control to snap it into place. But sometimes it doesn't always work, and it doesn't snap correctly. If that doesn't work with you, you can zoom in and align it that way by pressing G. Uh, but this way is always more accurate. 
So we have that, but look, it's uh, it's not aligned with the tops of the um, of the supports. So this turns out it was just the right length because it's this cube was too wide, and since we have it, when since we have each one of the um, supports spaced out two units, it works out nicely. So now we hit Control, drag it back along the Y, and uh, now it's all lined up. Um, so we're going to add a mod. Uh, actually, sorry, before you do that, you want to make sure you're in Blender game again. Do the same thing you did with the supports. So change it from static to rigid body, collision bounds to box. All right, so now we have all that. Um, next thing you want to do is go over here, add an, a modifier now. We don't want to change the relative offset because we want them right next to each other. And we don't want to make this count 10 because there's only nine spaces in between these 10 uh, supports. So we're going to make this nine and it works out. Now we're going to add another array. Now change that to zero, change the Y to one. Now uh, count to nine and there you go. You have your first level. To add another level, uh, there's a little bit, it's the same principles. You want to select your your uh, supports and add another array. This time your offset is not going to be 5 and it's not going to be in the Y, it's going to be in the Z selection. So let's go to 1 at first. Alright, you'll notice that the um, the support beams are going right through the floor tiles and that won't work because your building will just explode if you did that. So what you want to change this number to is let's make it uh, this is just a guess 1.1 1 .1. yep 1.1 1 .1. Uh, be uh, uh, yeah because this is too wide and 0.1 of two units is 0 0.1 so 1.1, 1 .1. let's make this 5 tall, let's say. Yeah, that looks good. Um, depending on your computer, you want to have this uh, different sizes. Um, so, and then for this, you want to add an array. Um, so 0, you don't want this 1 again, you want this, it's, let's try, let's try, oh, sorry, let's try 10. Let's see what 10 does. All right, you'll see that it doesn't work. Let's try 10.1. Oops, 10.1. Nope. 11. There we go. Uh, same principles as the spacing for the supports. Um. So now let's make this five tall because we want. Oops, that was 85. Five tall before, because uh, we want this top layer to be lined up, I mean, we want to have a top layer. So if you press Z, you can kind of see your building taking shape, and this is the building we're going to use. Now you can stack multiple multiple of these on top of each other, do anything you want with it, but just for tutorial sake, I'm going to leave it like this. So next thing you want to do is you want to apply all of your modifiers, uh, and then go apply all of your modifiers. Now you want to save this because you've done all this work and you don't want to lose it. So save it as uh, whatever you want, wherever you want. doesn't really matter. So, um, okay. Now you'll notice if we press P, the thing explodes. Uh, and both of these act as their own objects. This is because they are their own objects. You've uh, This was a modifier, so it edited the actual shapes. The reason, uh, the way to get, the way to uh, separate all these shapes is go and press tab into edit mode while you have your shape you want to separate selected. Now we want to slip, uh, sorry, we want to separate each one of these tiles. So we're going to, in edit mode, we're going to have all of them selected. We're going to press P, uh, separate by loose parts. All right, um, now you'll notice that they'll they're all they're all separate objects which is what we wanted now do that with your supports or your uh, 
tiles, whichever one you did first. By loose parts, same thing. And there you go. Okay. So you have all that. Uh, you have all that working. Now, P, let's see what happens. It, it will explode because the origins are in the wrong place. So as, um, so as the, so this, for example, this supports origin is right here. This supports origin is right here. So as they get farther and farther away, all of the, um, all of, all of the bounding boxes, the or collision bounds, get larger and larger, and it acts as a bunch of cubes inside of each other, which the physics engine does not like. To, to make all the origins uh, back where they should be, you want to select everything, so press A, and make sure everything's selected. Hit origin, origin to geometry, and now we have a bunch of these origins, just each one has their own little dot. Oops, yeah, each one has their own little dot, that dot, that's what you want. Next, let's press P to see how it's working. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, it's very glitchy. All right, now we want to fix this, because it, first of all, when you, if you see these, these uh, supports down here just kind of fall out from, under themselves from for no reason and then the building collapses it seems like it's you know it shouldn't happen it's not supposed to happen but there's a way to fix it you, you want to click on your plane uh, make sure that's selected just add collision bounds and now it'll work all right you'll see that um, now even with this the the simulation is still not very accurate uh, because, um, the supports kind of fall out and everything, but in real life that wouldn't happen because of the weights of the tiles. To make this more realistic, you're going to select it, or you don't even have to select everything, never mind. You're going to go over to this tab over here, or, yeah, this tab. You're going to increase the sub-steps, and what this will do is increase the frames it renders or simulates in between each frame it actually records. So, but increasing this will um, increase your simulation time. So now you'll notice once we increase the sub steps, the building doesn't collapse under its own weight anymore. All right, so you have that done. Now we're gonna make an object fly through it. We're not gonna uh, do the thing where you have the like ball bouncing off the triangle. We're gonna actually make the object move all the way across the screen. The way we're gonna do that is, so let's add a cone because it's more shit like a bullet and you know, who doesn't want to shoot a bullet through things. Um, so cone, R, Y, 90. Now let's press negative because it rotated the wrong way. So negative 90 degrees. Let's scale this up. Um, oops, scale that up. Let's press, uh, yeah. So you have this, let's go to three, and you can align it any position you want, doesn't matter. All right, so now you have this, you wanna open another window by click, uh, you wanna open another window by clicking on this uh, tr little triangle down here and dragging up. So we're gonna, oops, and then you can close them by clicking on that triangle and dragging down. Uh, now we're going to go into the logic editor. We're going to add a sensor. You can either do mouse or always. Always just make always makes it so that this um whatever this runs right when we start the game or the simulation. Mouse is whenever we click on it. A uh, mouse adds a little bit more interactivity, but I like to do always. Uh, add controller, you want to add an AND controller. Add actuator, you want to add a motion actuator. Then you want to link all of these. So you have them all linked. Now we want this, to, I like to make our little projectile here um, a rigid body and add collision bounds. You'll notice it says box, so this will actually act like a box, but we don't want that. We want to attack like a cone. 